few people asked me to continue to do these reacting to Rich Crater. Uh, let me see what episode I'm at. This is episode 55. And they're talking about the sock. And I'm doing this randomly as if I were sitting there on the panel. I didn't do any studying or anything. You know, I don't know what they're going to say. And I just want to go through it. And I'll stop it where there's points to be made. So let's hear what they have to say. These are all Darley supporters. You got Mystery Maverick, Rich Prater, Jamie, and Rich's wife, Bonnie, so far on the panel. was on the sock and it's funny because me and myself and jamie we've had uh, some in-depth conversation about the sock just recently so i know <laughs> excuse me i know jamie is is going to have something to say on this i know tara will I'm, I'm dying to see what what Danell has to say about it there's a lot of controversy around this sock and there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding itself around this sock um, because I think this sock explains a lot of the evidence that there was an intruder that indeed went into the house. I th That's what Darley wanted to make people think, or Darren, for that matter, for running it down that alley. My contention is, is that sock, they missed the gutter that's right there by it, and I'll show you. I think it's cool that it, uh, Google Earth and Google Maps actually lets you go down this alley because they don't usually do that. It has to go where the car, the car went. Here's the back of their house, real quick, and you can see the mulch bed is still there. You can see that the window is there. You know, which is kind of odd. And I'll stop right here for just a second because if the intruder came in that way, their TV is up against this back wall right here to kind of lighten up the room. That would be a deterrent to me as a burglar. That the TV was on, that would mean somebody, they would think somebody was up watching it. Because the TV was up against this back wall right in here. And then Darley's couch was kind of right there. But there's the mulch that, you know, they would have to go this way right here to this gate right there. And even if they went to the gate, and went out that that way you have these two security lights right here that would have went on and they didn't go on that night but anyways back to this the sock was found right here it was laying sort of like this all right it looks to me like the intention was that it go down that gutter to disassociate it from the house. Not to, you know, they, that's, they wanted to dis disassociate the sock from the house. Rich also says that he thinks that, you know, the intruder could have went out this way, went out this way. This area right here, it's, Three houses down from the root tiers. One, two, three. And it's the only one that doesn't have a gate there. A fence, right? From there. Let's let's double check myself. One, two, three houses, right? And if you look, gate there. Gate there if they would have went over that fence. I mean, someone could have, uh, you know, went the front way and did that. Could have. Not likely, but they could have. But again, the sock was found laying right here. I think this sock proves it in many ways more than one. Uh, some of the stuff I, I can't talk about at this time, but... You know, if there's something that you can't talk about at this time, you don't say there's stuff that I can't talk about at this time. 
that wants to see what he does that for is it makes him appear to be in privy to things that the public is not privy to and he's not he just isn't we can't discuss it and if you look at the sock one of the first things I noticed about the sock, does it look a little stretched out to you? Okay. He says it looks stretched out because, like, as if it was on somebody's arm. Darren testified that he used old socks to wash things down. There was a bucket of them, to, you know, to clean the cars up and stuff and use them for cleaning. And he, he testified that he used the, that those socks and he put them in a bucket that was in the utility room. That's where it came from. It's Darren's sock, and it came from the utility room. Now listen to what he says. Doesn't it kind of look like somebody may have been wearing it on their arm? Just now, wouldn't the same thing happen to a sock that had been worn over and over and over again on somebody's leg? If it was a small arm like Darley's, would it stretch it out? Just think about that. No, it wouldn't. But it's a worn sock. It's a worn sock that they that was probably stretched out and had holes in it. I think it had a hole in it. And Darren would use them to keep things clean. Just look at that for a moment. And then also look where the the blood splatter is on the sock. It's blood spatter rich. Now listen to what he says here, because I did hear this part and I know what he's gonna say. They, uh, they have found some of Darley's DNA, quite possibly from... You notice he doesn't tell you that they found it on the inside of the sock. He doesn't say that yet. He stays away from that. Let's let's go back just a tad. Also look where the blood splatter is on the sock. It's minimal, but it's there. Also, they, uh, they have found some of Darley's DNA, quite possibly from saliva that was on the sock. If it was from saliva that was on the sock, as if they gagged her with it, you would have to believe that this intruder was on top of her, gagging her with the sock, slashing her, and cutting her, and beating her arms at the same time to believe that she was gagged with that sock. That's the only way it could happen. And attempting to rape her. So really, uh, if you have on pants, you have to use your other thing to expose yourself to perpetrate the rape. So what was this intruder, an octopus? I think I may have just solved the case. And they found Devin and Damon's blood types or blood match on the sock as well. This sock was 75 yards from the murder scene found in the alleyway at a trash receptacle or a, um, a sewer lid, very close to it anyway, within inches of the sewer lid, uh, in the alleyway behind the Routier house. And again, that's 75 yards. Now to go from the murder scene to where this sock was found at running full blast, so mind you, Darren Routier did this test, it takes 26 seconds. He knows that it takes 26 seconds because Barb Davis, Barb Davis, the person who wrote Precious Angels, and then turned to believe that Darley was innocent, even though she her book is really damning, said that she did it. She did it in 26 seconds and ran back, and she's a whole 10 years, 20 years older than Darley. One way, there's almost one minute that it would take running full blast, and mind you, this would have been the 29, 30 year old healthy male meaning Darren Routier that had done this test. I don't know if Darren did the test or not, but I know that Barb Davis did. I don't remember Darren ever doing this test. That doesn't mean Rich doesn't know something I don't know. Running full blast from the murder scene, the sock back from the sock back to the murder scene is almost a full minute. Okay, so, um, you know, that, that really bites into the big timeline, which the timeline will do on a later episode. There is no timeline, just like Barb Davis said. Damon died in the ambulance. 
they're basing the timeline on well the medical examiner said on the stand that Damon can only live a maximum of nine minutes which the medical examiner never said that you can see that in a, on a different video that I he never she never said that it was uh, Parchman Townsend that same medical examiner also said that Darley's wounds could be self-inflicted but they don't want to tell you that part there is really no timeline Darren went to bed about 10 or 10 30 that night so she had quite a long time to stage some things. Really. And I think it's very odd that she didn't scream until the intruder had already left. Uh, many of the non-supporters state there was no timeline. That is absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous that everything that Barb Davis had said after she decided Darley was innocent is absolutely ridiculous too. Because Barb Davis says that straight on the on the uh, Lisa Gibbons show. She said there is no timeline. She studied it. She was in the courtroom every single day. She spoke to friends of family. Not many of the family. She also spoke to one family member that didn't think that Darley was uh, guilty or innocent. Rich always says, well, there's not, her whole family's behind her. No, there is one. And, and it's right in her book. There's not a timeline. I think, yeah, he's right. There is a timeline. The timeline starts as soon as Darren went to bed. That's when it starts. And it ends when the paramedics leave with Damon. That's the timeline. Because as soon as the as soon as Darren went to bed, that's when she was alone with those kids. That's your timeline. He went to bed about 1030 that night and the murders occurred around right around 2 o'clock. That's your timeline. Four and a half hours. She could have cut. She didn't cut the screen. She did. Flip the table over. She did. There was a very minimal staging. If you if you if you look at it, it's the flipping of, over of that table. The getting the, the and the cutting the screen is the biggest staging. She could have done that any time. There's always a timeline, and there clearly is a timeline in the case, especially with the sock. Um, and uh, let's go one at a time here. I'd like uh, everybody to get. Uh... Here's what we think, and it's pure speculation. She could have stabbed Devin and Damon. She didn't scream until the intruder left. They could have been there for a minute. You know, because you can't determine the time of death to exact minute. You just can't. And the medical examiner said that on a stand. She said you can't tell. Period. So, you know, it, it's very possible. You know, she stabbed Evan and Damon. Then ran that sock down. And came back and saw that Damon was still struggling. Then put that knife behind her back, which didn't come from Ryan Kester. It came from the investigators. There was dark, there was a knife print that fit the knife on the back of her nightgown that had her blood on it only. So there, he, you know. Something uh, said in here, um, so we can go in chronological order as to how we are on the screen. Uh, Mr. Maverick, thoughts on the sock? Well, the, the sock is one of the most important things in this case because they couldn't, they they just couldn't fit it in. The prosecution couldn't make it fit. Actually, if you read Tom Bevel's testimony, he did fit it in. He did fit it in. Greg Davis also mentions the sock in his closing. You know, she knew damn well that that sock came from her house. She wanted to get it out of her house as far as she could. That's the first gutter that you come to when you go in that alley. Let's double check that. Yep, double checking that. That is the first gutter.
She didn't have to run it down here, actually. <laughs> that is the first gutter. And the only way they attempted to do that, but they failed horribly, was by saying that Dolly um, stabbed Damon twice. Now they they failed horribly. Why is Darley sitting on death row in Texas right now? Things that make you go, hmm. There's, there's several things that like, don't, don't make sense about that. So, several things. Can you please bullet point those for us? Tara repeats herself a lot, and she goes over the same thing a lot if you listen to her. have stabbed the boys then run down and drop the sock then why couldn't she have done that she didn't wake darren up until after the intruder left run back but she didn't even have to run even even if you stretch it so even if you say she did say she did come back she came back um, to the house after dropping the sock it still only gives her an extra minute for any time at all the timeline starts as soon as Darren went to bed 10 30. she didn't scream until the intruder left that's when it, that's the time that it alerted it alerted someone else to the scene Screen from the outside. She didn't have to do all that. She could have done that stuff before. And she did do that stuff before, in my opinion. Come back in. Um, smash the glass. Um, what else has she got to do? Knock the table over. When we know the table was already knocked over because that's in Darren's testimony. Um, and... Aaron's testimony also states that Darley helped him hold the wound, the chest wound together, right? But there's none of Darley's blood on the front doorknob. Or none of the boy's blood on the front doorknob. If she was helping him hold that wound together with bare hands, she would have the boy Devin's blood on her hand when she opened that doorknob. It doesn't give her anything. Again, the timeline starts when Darren went to bed. It doesn't change the timeline. It doesn't give her any more time. In addition, uh, why, if, if um, Damon wasn't mortally wounded, then... Someone here says, Darley did not pl plant the sock. Logic tells you she would plant it in her own yard. Not if she felt like it had her blood on it. And not if she knew that her, not if she felt like it had her DNA on the inside of it. Then he could have run out the front door to a neighbor. He could have gone upstairs to Darren. Do you see what I mean? Like, that would leave him, if she still left him alive while she's out of the house and he's not mortally wounded he could well she didn't know he was still alive she didn't know she's not real bright she mentioned the knife in the 911 call before the 911 operator mentioned a knife she was very fixed on that knife she stabbed him a couple of times and then ran down the alley run back it still only gives her like an extra minute to do all of this stuff that she had to do which is like to tell us why Tara and you're more than welcome to come to my channel I won't be rude to you if you're in my comment section 
as long as you're not rude to me. But tell us why she couldn't have done all that stuff in her own time before she yelled for Darren, before she broke the wine glass. So she had like two minutes to do everything. You know, the time Darren was there before she called 911. So you've got to take into account that was probably, what, 30 seconds. Darren lied a lot on the stand. Greg Davis goes through some of those lies that he catches you with. We don't know that Dar Darren didn't help her stage that scene. A lot of us believe that he did. A lot of us believe that he did. He's got something to a minute. Darren said that when he got to the bottom of the steps, she was already on the phone. That's, that's what he did say that. Time and Damon was still alive. So why leave? Why leave? Leave him still alive? He could, he could tell. He could say, look, my mum was stabbed me. You know. Well, then she realized that Damon was still alive. We believe there was a second attack. We can't prove that. That's why she kept saying, Devin, 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 Devin and led Darren away from Damon over to Devin, who she knew was dead, who wasn't crawling away. And he led, she led Waddell out to the garage, away from Damon. So I, I yeah. just... Why would she holler, Devin, 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 and then, oh my God, the boys have been stabbed. Oh my God, the boys, the boys, the boys. She just said, Devin, 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 Devin. Theory, which again, like I said, give theory is so ridiculous. Why is Darley sitting on death row today? There was 12 people that sat in the courtroom and listened to every bit of evidence that disagree with you, Tara. Yeah, they claimed that it was um, a part of a, um, a you know, stage, um, stage, staging the scene, which is absolutely ridiculous. But um, why is it so abs? First of all, why stage a crime scene and then not use it? Is my question. Because if Darley staged it, why didn't she use the stage? how to use the stage i think that she was trying to put that sock down in the gutter because she knew it came from the house that's what i think that's what a lot of us think she just missed she just missed that gutter right. she never mentioned the sock she didn't even know about the sock right and, and even how do you know she didn't know about the sock if she was gagged with it better if you look at Smith or if you look at Diane Downs these two ladies claim that they seen their attacker so did Darley I saw a man I know what happened in that house he had short hair and was wearing a baseball cap and if she was fighting him off using her arms to fight him off she got defense wounds, right? That's what you guys claim. But she didn't see his face. And gave a full description of the attacker that didn't exist. Both of them, Diane Downs and Susan Smith. So if Darley Lynn was going to stage the scene and stage the intruder that come into the house, why would she say, you know, she could only see a might have had a black cap on, you know, um, she wanted to give everything vaguely, right? And another contention is when it suits you guys, you say, well, she she was in shock, which she wasn't, according to the paramedics. 
you know, she didn't remember a lot of things, but she remembered certain things about this so-called intruder. And she knew, she knew my husband was not the man I saw. She knew that too. She said that. You know, it might add jeans on. I don't remember what his face looks like. Why don't I give a full description? My husband is not the man I saw. Hmm. How would she know? Because he was helping her stage? Which is something she never did because she don't recall it. So, get something else I want to put out there. Um, Jamie, you're up. Your thoughts on the song? Well, my thoughts on the sock are similar to what Tara said, and I and I had a vision where he was wearing the sock. But She's a psychic. She had a vision. If you listen to Roberta Glass speak about the Darley Rue tear case, listen to her. First of all, I got mentioned in that, and I got to thank you for that. So, go watch it. Roberta Glass is an expert criminal profile that's been featured on all kinds of different TV shows. And she says she doesn't like psychics. That nobody is psychic. You're not psychic. I'm not psychic. Nobody is psychic. They ruin crime cases in the most places. That's profiling with Pat Brown. Her Darlie Routier episode. You can listen to her say that. And she's an expert. She's a renowned expert. He only had one sock on. He didn't have two, which I did not see him when he put it on. I did not see where it came from. I did see the one sock on his hand during the stabbing. How convenient that you did not see this and you did not see that. She claims to be a psychic. <laughs> That's a joke. Um... And, and I agree with Tara. I mean, if you're going to stage the sock, why would you even bother running that far? Just throw it over the fence. Because it came from the house. And she knew that she picked it up from the utility room basket. The intruder had time to be in the house to search for a knife, search for a sock. Where's the intruder timeline at? to definitely see it you know uh, I don't think the sock was meant to be seen um, and it was and why right, it, it was right by that uh, that sewer drainage and you know I honestly feel that the killer was running and just tore that thing off and threw it you know or it could have been on top of I honestly feel that Darley was moving quickly and had it in her hand and just threw it like but if it if it was Dolly, why didn't she just throw the knife there? Why exactly. what's the, the sock? What what that just doesn't make any sense. It's a pretty decent point. Why didn't she throw the sock down there or the knife down there? That's a reasonable point. I mean I'll give her a point for that one. Well, keep in mind Darley didn't even recognize her own knife when she picked it up. She said a knife. Darley said a large white handled knife in her statement to Patterson. She did not say right. a knife. And but the other the thing, thing about the, the thing is she said he dropped his knife. She wanted to make it seem like he picked the knife out of the block. Her house. She didn't have. She didn't have to tell them she picked up a knife at all. If it was her, she could have just right. washed it off. She was worried about the fingerprints. Now, now she's saying here. I believe. Let me see. Let me just let her see. Put it back in the. Put it back in the. In the. In the. Um, in the knife holder. James Cron, one of the first things he did when he got to that house, when he saw that knife and that knife block, and if even if it was back in there, what he would have said was he wanted every knife in the house tested. If she would have cleaned it off and put it in there, she would have left moisture and bleach on the inside of that knife block, and it, there would have been blood on it, and it went back in the knife block. She can't put it back in there with blood on it. She was smart enough to know that. 
Oscar, and no one, you know, she, according to her, no one would have been none the wiser. Why even leave the knife? You, you'd think if that was you that did it, you'd think, oh, I'll get rid of the knife because otherwise it's going to look like I did it. Do you see what I mean? Where she wasn't even thinking about that. She just picked it up. Do you see what I mean? Like, her story is that, like, she picked yeah. it up. Yeah. But, and, like, and, she didn't have to say that story. She could have just, like, cleaned up the evidence. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> like, she didn't have to mom, say... She said that she... She told Patterson that she was standing on near the wine rack. And she saw him drop his knife from near where the wine rack was. Let me see if I can find it. And just again, while I'm here on this, the TV was right here. Let me... This is where the TV was. And then the reason I'm stating that is because if the intruder is coming through the backyard... The intruders coming through the backyard here, sneaking up through here, these big ass windows, right? He would have saw the TV light. That would be a deterrent, but that's not what we're... Darley told Patterson that she was standing like, the wine rack was right here, right up against this wall. She told Patterson that she was standing about right here when she turned the light on and she saw the knife in the doorway of the utility room, which is back off this way. So she was standing right here when she says that she saw that, right in this area, right here to the foyer. So her view would have been much like this, right? You can't, that's the utility room. You can't see over this nook. And that's what Patterson said. Patterson stood right here. Stood right here in this area. And this is where Darley said she was standing when she saw the knife. And he said he couldn't see anything laying on the floor from there. And he's taller than Darley. The knife was found like in this doorway right about here. Just in the doorway. Right about there. Almost in the doorway. And this gives us an idea of how small that foyer is. Darren comes down these steps. The front door is about right here. So that foyer is actually pretty small. There's a uh, full bathroom right here. That just, you know, the door being right there, you know, with her and her cell cordless phone was laying right about here. Here's a quick view of the back of the house really quickly. Again, with the mulch. That This is the window right here that said intruder came in and out of. Now the intruder, if he would have stepped out onto this walk, which is about the same, it's almost the same, it would have set off the motion detector lights. This wood plank that's still there is from the steam house she had. They had two motion detector lights that were about right here. You found the knife. It's, it's, right. it's, it sounds like unbelievable that you found the knife. Do you get me? So, right. if anything, yeah. if she'd done it. Why would you. Why am I past my trip uh, Okay, so Rich, you know the picture I sent you of the sock? Yeah. With the prints on it? On the Before. other picture? Okay, so do you want me to bring that up now? It, sure. I mean, we're on the sock. Okay, so the picture I sent you where you can see the knife prints, if you look at the handle of that knife, you'll see it looks like a handle. Remember when I told you he, he switched and then he put the knife back into the sock hand? You see, D40 says there would have been a blood trail to the drop sock. Darley was bleeding. She could not have planted it there. Darley wasn't necessarily bleeding when she dropped that sock up. They also claimed that there was footprints in blood in that house that didn't belong to anybody, even though James Cryan had all the responders tested their shoes and it was found to be a paramedic. There was also no blood 
from an intruder there that had stepped in it. There was just none. And I know it was moist outside. It could have been washed away, to be honest with you. Of the knife when he was stabbing. Now, Darley has on her hand a slip down. The thing that she was one of the things that she's worried about is that after she had dropped that sock off is when she realized that Damon was still alive, and she didn't have the sock when she stabbed him the second time. Now we can't prove that. But those three little marks she's got on her finger, her fingers, three little cut marks. Let me see if I can find them. Here's one picture of it. Right? You see the cut here, the cut here, and the cut here. Now, if you close your hand together and slip it off of a knife, that would be, in my opinion, because she didn't have the sock on during a second. Here's a better picture. Now remember, clench your hand together and you'll see that she's got one down here on her thumb too. You can't see it this picture. That's a knife slip in my opinion. Here's the sock again. And you notice it's down towards the end, which would be a slip mark in my opinion with her DNA on the inside toe of the sock. Now, I'm gonna move along real quick here. I want my people who watch this, I want them to stay in to, to watch. And I know that when you get too long into it, people lose interest and they stop watching. I, I, I know what you're talking about um, on the sock, but, but again, you know, Other than tells us that the knife came from the house and the sock came from the house. These kind of killers, you know, why would they, a crazed killer, break into a house and look for reasons, look for equipment to commit the killing with? Why didn't they bring their own gloves? If Darley was targeted, why didn't they bring their own gloves? I personally believe that the, um, I mean, they had dogs out there and the dogs found a scent that went from the house all the way to the sock. And then that's where it stopped, which tells me that somebody got into a vehicle and fleed the scene. It's the first time I've heard Rich say that. Well, Rich, you got to consider this too. If the dog sniffed the blood out from the sock and stopped right there that could very well also be because the person that put it there turned around and went right back the same way the dog came from that how does that tell you that a vehicle did that that tells tells you that someone went to the sock and back to the scene that's what it tells you rich No indication that there's a car there to pick her, pick him up. You had Guzman outside. He wasn't outside, but he was sitting at his window. He didn't, he didn't see a car. He was sitting at his kitchen uh, window. I believe. Well, there's just too many fences up for me to tell, and I'm not sure what 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 house Guzman was in. I believe it was this one. But he didn't see or hear anything. Now, consider this. When you go down this alley to the end, nobody saw a car.
you can either go back into the plat, right? You go back into the plat this way, or you go this way. Police were coming in. I think on this is Linda Vista. But you had, you would have, I think you would have been seen by the police leaving, and the police didn't see any cars. Um, I mean, you know, those dogs aren't gonna lie. You know, them dogs, uh, you know, they're they're not like Greg Davis and and uh, you know, uh, Jim Patterson. They're, they're gonna, you know, where they say it stops and where it stops, they don't even know when, how to lie. So, I mean, you know, I, I know I'm being a little bit smart, Alec, kind of like with that comment, but I, I don't, I, I don't like either one of them people at all. But anyway. Of course you wouldn't like them, Rich, because they put your beloved Darley away. You have to understand this too, that the Routiers had a small, I don't know what kind of dog he was. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Mis I'm not gonna. They were breeding him. His name was Domain. I'm not exactly sure what kind of dog he was, but he was a yapper, ruh, 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 according to Darley now. And the dog was barking, 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 barking at the police, and he actually bit one of the police officers. And Darley said, "Oh, he always does that when strangers come around." Let that sink in for a minute, Rich. with that knife and he the other one did not have the sock on and he, that's when the knife hit the frame and it fell onto the floor that's what i see and so when I, she saw this she's got a psychic now i looked at the sock i thought well i could be wrong but lo and behold there that looks like the handle of the knife and then that thing and then on the other that goes across looks like where the knife point um you know was on the uh, going through the handle where they they uh, had the they handled the knife twice and then it fell. I could be wrong, but that's my guess on that. But I did see, you know, him run into the door, and I I seen him the knife. The reason why it dropped was because he hit the frame. Which claims that he doesn't like speculation in this case, but he allows it on his panel. I don't like to speculate. But here's a psychic. Okay. So, Danelle, you're... Dark. I'm going to end this after Danelle speaks. I want to try and run 45 minutes. Uh, go ahead, Danelle. Can y'all hear me? Of course. So, um, I, I feel like the, the talk is just evidence that there was somebody else inside that home only because... Based on their blood expert and their theory, Darley had to have been bleeding prior to that blood drop landing on her from Damon. And that's what Bevel said. He said she had to have been leave. He said she had to have been bleeding to leave that knife imprint. Right? The knife imprint that's on the carpet is Darley's blood. Right? It's only Darley's blood. Does that mean the intruder dropped the knife? No, that indicates to me a second attack on Damon. Because nowhere does Darley explain how he dropped that knife into onto the carpet to leave an imprint. It's a perfect imprint. have to be bleeding. And there 
there is not time before the 911 call. How come there's not time before the 911 call? Can you explain that, Danelle? How come there's not time? Tell us. I want to know. Well, because there's a timeline in the... The medical examiner said that, you know, he could only live a maximum of nine minutes. No, the medical examiner never said that. She had from 1030 until the time she committed the crime. That's, and I hear a lot about how that, that talk is actually damaging to Darlene's case because none of her blood is on it. But I just can't get behind that. I can't see how that could possibly be damaging to Darlene. Because it came from inside the house. That's the main thing. Song down the non supporters before she stabbed herself. Um, well, the timeline doesn't fit. Yes, it does because the, she didn't start screaming for Darren until after she smacked that wine glass out of the wine rack and the intruder had left. The timeline begins when Darren went to bed about 10 30 and it ends. When he came down those stairs. Devin, 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 Devin. She wasn't sure if Damon was dead yet. I'm going to let this go a minute. Yeah, I agree. It, it doesn't make sense. Even, even if Darren was dead, it doesn't make sense. Um, it just doesn't. Then there's not any way for them to spin it where it makes sense for Darlene planting it. And there's no way for you to spin it that she didn't. The dog going up from the house to the sock and then stopping there is an indicator to me you know that they smell that sock coming from the house and whoever put it there went back to the house fridge goes high room goes swish toaster goes pop and knife goes job door goes slam microwave There's one sound that no one knows. What does the sock say? Why is there a sock in here? What's the sock say? Icky, icky, icky shoe. Really? Socks make that noise? Icky, icky, icky shoe. What's 